President Obama visited the Islamic Society of Baltimore today in a show of religious tolerance. It was his first visit to an American mosque, and some say he picked the wrong one. The center has passed ties to the Muslim Brotherhood and the Northern Virginia Mosque, where at least one radical preached. American Islamic Forum for Democracy President Dr. Zudi Jasser is with me now. Dr. Jasser, great to see you. You say you. that the choice that the Obama administration let President Obama go to this particular mosque sends the wrong message. How did this happen? Well, either they didn't do their homework or they just uh, did what we call the lowest hanging fruit syndrome. They wanted one in the metro area, so they went to Baltimore. And the problem is, is that this basically, you know, treats Muslims like somehow we have some other set of standards that everybody ignores and uses us as a prop for political one-upsmanship. You know, the commander-in-chief, if he's going to rise above this, this is a nonpartisan issue. This same mosque only a few years ago had an imam that was preaching grotesque homophobia, saying that uh, homosexuals had, uh, were, were mental deviants, needed to be eradicated. They had connections to Imam Awlaki, who, by the way, walked on that same path, visiting that mosque multiple times, as uh, a record show from November 2001. And they also have condoned uh, suicide bombing. They're connected to the North American Islamic Trust, which has connections to Imam Kardawi, a radical imam in the Middle East. So this is not a typical mosque that is going to cherish the values that this president supposedly lectures Christians and others on about women's equality. I mean, it's a gender apartheid mosque, and yet doesn't apply to Muslims. He's only going to lecture tomorrow at the prayer breakfast to Christians on, on other things, which is sort of hypocritical. Dr. Jesser, I want to get back to you on the women's issues and, and how the differences between the genders are being treated, especially in Europe. But I just want to ask you quickly, do you agree with what's happening in France? That is to say, where they find a mosque, either where an imam is preaching violence or actually has arms, which in some cases has happened, they just close it. Well, if there's arms and they're preaching violence and actively uh, um, stimulating violent acts, that needs to be shut down. That's illegal from American law. But if they're preaching hate and radical ideology that's a conveyor belt towards militancy, that the only way to defeat that, Deirdre, is with good ideas, with Muslims that are countering, that are reformists through our Muslim reform movement. If you shut them down, it actually causes them to spread, as we've seen in Tajikistan, Egypt, and every other country where they, they are autocrats, and that doesn't work. So, Dr. Jasser, let me ask you, getting back to what you just mentioned, a month after hundreds of women were sexually assaulted New Year's Eve in a few German cities, Cologne probably the most notable, there's now a safe zone for females at next week's carnival in Germany, basically their equivalent of Mardi Gras, um, to try to keep citizens safe. German authorities also issuing these kind of cartoon leaflets at public swimming pools, basically just trying to do a crash course in gender equality and saying you cannot harass women in public. How is Germany going to get out of this, Dr. Jouster? I mean, they've wanted to welcome people. They've wanted to welcome the migrants. They've wanted to house the refugees. But it just seems like for certain people, the language difference and the culture difference is too great to overcome very quickly. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, listen, I've been very uh, frank about the fact that we can't change the narrative about being the beacon of freedom, the city on the hill in the West to, to counter the ISIS ideology, but it was happening too fast. Tens, hundreds, millions were coming to the West, and when you have that too fast, you have a clash of civilizations and cultures. These safe zones actually, though, is not the answer. It's actually doing exactly what they do in the Middle East, where women can't mix because, oh, you can't trust men and their hormones, so they're going to be treated in a very second, third class way, which is absurd. I mean, either you apply the rule of law and you apply it to the immigrants, the migrants, in a way that treats them as adults, or you ship them out and you're changing your entire society. They can't do that. It's surrender but by Dr. basically Jesse, enacting what about Sharia manpower? law. I mean, that was part of the problem in Cologne. There weren't even enough German police officers to deal with all the attacks. Well, the answer, though, is not to create a Middle Eastern type society that segregates separate but unequal for men and women. I guess if that's the only way to protect them, but they're basically changing the very fabric of the equality of sexes in order to 
to appease violent barbarians who have come into their society, which, by the way, most Muslims would not want that either. We're trying not to have mosques separate men and women because of this type of, of uh, appeasement that it does to the way men treat women in Muslim-majority societies in very subservient ways. So by separating it, you're basically putting a Band-Aid on it and causing it to actually fester more rather than treat the true disease, which is a 13th century mentality. Dr. Jasser, always great to have you with us. Thank you for the time. Thank you for your insights. Anytime. Dr. Zudi Jasser with me there.